I'll waste no time in building up how grand and close to my heart this video is gonna be. I love the 24 issue Godzilla Rulers of Earth, and so do millions of kaiju fans. So in this video, we would be exploring all 30 kaiju that appeared in the comic. But I think it's important that I quickly brief you about the villains in the story. For example, the Cryogs and Trilopods for a better perspective. The Cryogs are these alien dudes who showed up on Earth with a plan to conquer it after their own planet got wrecked by King Ghidorah. They're pretty sneaky and had this temporary deal with the Devonians, a fish-like alien race who lived in the Earth's oceans to share Earth. But their boss, Commander Ryzen, was playing the long game to double-cross them eventually. These cryogs are pretty tech-savvy. They fixed up Gigan after a rough battle and even turned King Ghidorah into Mecha King Ghidorah. Furthermore, they're all about using their tech to control and weaponize kaiju, like turning Godzilla into their puppet with Mecha King Ghidorah. But their plans often backfire. Now Ryzon, he's the big cheese of the Cryogs. After their first plan tank, he disguised himself as a Devonian, playing double agent, and even got involved with mass-producing Mecha Godzillas. The Trilopods, on the other hand, are these gnarly insectoid monsters cooked up by the Cryogs Emperor Karkaro. They're the ultimate copycats, able to absorb kaiju DNA and mimic their abilities. Karkaro unleashed them to take down Earth's monsters and finish what Ryzen couldn't. These guys are no joke and even managed to capture Godzilla and other big-name kaiju. Now that we've established this, let's explore the 30 amazing kaiju that appeared in Godzilla Rulers of the Earth. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Gigan. This is gonna be a long one since Gigan has appeared in most parts of the story. After getting trounced in Hong Kong, Gigan, now a blind and banged up mess, burst out of the ground in Arizona's Grand Canyon. The cryog aliens were secretly keeping an eye on him. Just when he thought things couldn't get worse, he ran into Kumanga, who went into full attack mode, spitting webs and dragging Gigan into its lair. Gigan, playing it smart, pretended to be defeated to lure Kumanga in closer. Then he whipped out his abdominal buzzsaw, chopped off one of Kumanga's legs, and broke free. He wasn't done yet, though. Gigan cranked up his eye laser and torched the whole valley before making a grand escape. Upgraded and under the control of the Cryogs, Gigan was off to Area 51 to snag the Millennium UFO. He escorted it to Vegas. But guess who showed up? Big G! Not one to back down, Gigan tangled Godzilla up with his grappling hooks and dragged him through the city, giving the UFO a chance to suck up some of Godzilla's DNA. Then came the counter kaiju reaction forces with their shiny new mecha, Mogira, which targeted Gigan. The fight was intense, but it was gonna get worse, or better, depending on your stomach for monster action. Gigan blasted Mogira's missiles, but Mogira played tough, blocking Gigan's attacks and landing some serious blows. When Magira shifted its focus to the UFO, Gigan tried to strike back but ended up smashing the UFO by accident, freeing Orga. While Godzilla and Orga were duking it out, Gigan tried to help by attacking Godzilla with his hooks again. But Godzilla wasn't called the King of the Monsters for no reason and he yanked Gigan towards him. In the midst of the chaos, Orga lost it and tried to chomp down on Gigan. But Gigan was not really in the mood to be eaten, so he impaled Orga and sliced off his fingers. Godzilla grabbed Gigan and slammed him down hard. Orga was history soon after, thanks to Jet Jaguar growing massive inside Orga and blowing him up. Godzilla and Jet Jaguar ganged up on Gigan. After Jet Jaguar ripped off part of Gigan's tail and cracked his visor, he left to finish off Orga, which gave Gigan a chance to fight back. Gigan lit up Godzilla with his laser and slashed away until the Star Falcon distracted him. Godzilla took the opportunity, pinned Gigan down, and blasted him with atomic breath. Beaten and burnt, Gigan had no choice choice but to retreat with a cryog ship carrying Orga's leftovers. So, after a bit of downtime, the cryogs spruced up Gigan, making him a real beast. His first gig was to chop off King Ghidorah's middle head 
for some cyber upgrades. After Mecha King Ghidorah bit the dust, the Cryogs needed Gigan back in action to defend their ship from his ex-buddy, Space Godzilla. Gigan tried destroying Space Godzilla with his laser, but no dice. He got creative and used his grappling hooks on Space Godzilla's tail trying to throw him away from the ship. But Space Godzilla whipped up a crystal prison around Gigan. No worries, though. Gigan's buzzsaw came in handy, and he sliced his way out. He even managed to land a few good slashes on Space Godzilla, messing up one of his shoulder crystals. Space Godzilla shot back with his corona beam, torching Gigan's sails. Things got tricky when Gigan's right arm got stuck in Space Godzilla's crystalline high. Space Godzilla went airborne, and Gigan had to chop off his own arm to break free. Back on the drawing board, the Cryogs sent him out again, this time with double chainsaws for arms, and stashed him on the moon. Later, when the Cryog Emperor Karkaro showed up to settle scores with his rogue underling Ryzen, he accidentally set Gigan loose on his own fleet. Gigan went to town on them slicing and dicing with his chainsaws and dodging their attacks, making them shoot each other instead. Jet Jaguar popped in to throw down with Gigan again, kicking off a brawl on Karkaro's ship. Gigan scored a hit, but Jet Jaguar turned the tables, making Gigan carve up Karkaro's ship. In a twist, Ryzen pushed Karkaro into Gigan's buzzing chainsaws, offing him. The ship then crashed into Majida, a massive trilopod, and Gigan vanished in the chaos. But the story doesn't end there. Gigan was later spotted getting some TLC, right next to a Mechagodzilla unit, probably courtesy of some surviving cryogs. Rodan. In the comic, Rodan swooped into the scene, shaking things up by duking it up with Varen at a military base. Rodan had the upper hand in the air until Varen's back spikes tore through his wing, forcing Rodan to beat a hasty retreat. Later, we catch a glimpse of Rodan in a flashback, chilling in his cave on a hillside, part of a story about the pecking order among these monster heavyweights. He's also spotted in a mural in Infants Island's cave, hanging out with other high flying kaiju. Later, Rodan's wing is all patched up. He's relocated to the Monster Islands, where he's living the good life, until the trilopods crash the party. Rodan gets knocked down, his DNA swiped by a trilopod, and ends up a prisoner in their hive, along with the other island kaiju. But things took a jog to the left when King Caesar went berserk in the trilopod hive, busting out the captive earth monsters. Free at last, Rodan zooms over to Los Angeles to back up Godzilla in a showdown. He takes on the Anguirus trilopod, kicks its butt, and then tangles with Majida, a ginormous trilopod. Despite his best efforts, Rodan gets smacked down pretty hard. After the dust settles, Rodan, along with the rest of the kaiju crew, follows Godzilla as they all head out to sea. Mothra. In the comic series, Mothra first popped up in issue number one itself. We see her in a panel during Dr. Kenji Ando's talk about megazoology in Honolulu, Hawaii. In issue number four, Mothra's in the thick of it, battling Destoroya alongside Godzilla. The fight was brutal, leaving Mothra seriously hurt. Her twin larvae had to swoop in to help her out. After the clash, Godzilla and Mothra had a moment before her larvae carried her back to Infant Island. By issue number nine, Mothra returned to Infant Island, still recovering with her larvae. The Shobijin, those tiny twin fairies, were worried Mothra might never fully bounce back from the beating she got from Destoroya. The plot thickens in issue number 19. The Shobijin show up at the Monster Islands, but with some bad news. Infant Island got wrecked by Batra, who was being controlled by Minette and Mallory. They revealed that Mothra didn't make it out of that battle. It was just them and the larvae who escaped. Then, as if things couldn't get worse, Batra, with Minette and Mallory, arrived at the islands to finish off Mothra's larvae. But before Batra could do the deed, the trilopods crashed the party, attacking Batra and other monsters there. Lucky break for the larvae, they managed to dodge getting nabbed by the trilopods and stay put on the islands. At the end of the story, Mothra's larvae were seen on a security monitor on the monster islands, doing their thing and cocooning themselves.
Zilla. This water monster, at least according to the comic, had been drawn in a cave mural on Infant Island. In the present time, Zilla's first seen by a sub and gets mistaken for Godzilla. Classic mix-up. He then crashes the party in Honolulu, Hawaii, and, thanks to some radio glitch, receives the name Zilla. Zilla was tearing up Honolulu to create an elegant mess, but the real Godzilla showed up, puffing his atomic breath. Zilla was quick on his feet and managed to dodge Godzilla's attack. Zilla tries to chomp on Godzilla, but Godzilla ain't having it and punches Zilla down. Zilla's not done yet, though. He claws at Godzilla's leg, but Godzilla bites back, literally, grabs Zilla's tail, and chucks him into a building. Godzilla tries to finish Zilla off with his atomic breath, but Zilla's something of a digger. He burrows underground and avoids getting roasted. Zilla pops up behind Godzilla and rams him, but Godzilla bites Zilla's neck. The fight gets wild as the military also starts shooting at them. Zilla's digging tricks come in handy again as he manages to set a trap for Godzilla. But then, Zilla gets distracted by the military, and Godzilla bursts through a building and grabs Zilla by the throat. Just as Godzilla's about to finish Zilla with an atomic blast, the military's firing distracts Godzilla and gives Zilla a chance to bolt to the sea. Years later, Zilla's spotted swimming around the monster islands, but he's playing it cool not setting foot on land. When the trilopods invade, Zilla's nowhere to be found among the captured kaiju. Later, in LA, Zilla makes a comeback, saving Jet Jaguar from a Godzilla-like trilopod. They tag team and take down the trilopod. Then, Zilla joins the big league with Godzilla, King Caesar, and the rest of the monster gang to take on the trilopod hybrids. Zilla goes all out and kills several of the bad guys. He even tries to take on Megida, the massive trilopod queen, but gets the boot, literally. After Godzilla takes down Megida, Zilla, along with the other monsters, follow Godzilla as they head out to sea. Kumanga. Kumanga was the land monster from the cave mural on Infant Island, and it had quite the journey. After getting roughed up in New York, Kumanga hightailed it back to Arizona. There, he set up shop in the Grand Canyon and spun a massive web system. Gigan was still reeling and blinded from a previous scrap with Anguirus and Rodan. Gigan blunders into Kamanga's web, and Kamanga gets busy using his webbing skills to yank Gigan into his lair. He starts cocooning Gigan and manages to dodge a few attacks from Gigan's claws. Gigan plays dead, and Kamanga, thinking it's snack time, moves in. Big mistake! Gigan kicks into gear, revs up his abdominal buzzsaw, and lops off one of Kumanga's legs. Kumanga is forced to beat a hasty retreat and hides out in a cave. A few years later, Kumanga was nabbed and dumped on the monster islands. He's not just hanging around, though. He gets into a tussle with Sanda and Baragon. But then the trilopods show up. Kumanga's one of the first to get smacked down. These alien creeps copy his DNA, morphing into a Kumanga lookalike. Kumanga and the other island monsters get snatched up and stuffed into the trilopod hive. King Caesar busts into the hive and sets the captives free. Now that he was back in action, Kumanga joined the big fight against the trilopods in LA. He takes on the Anguirus trilopod, slinging webs like there's no tomorrow. After that, Kumanga's in the mix, fighting Megida with the rest of Earth's monster squad. Anguirus. Originally frozen in an ice cap, he was one of the Earth monsters who got a rude awakening. In issue number 14, Anguirus found himself in a tight spot. He got jumped by a Mecha Godzilla, which was under the control of a Cryog leader pretending to be a Russian bigwig. The fight was brutal. Mecha Godzilla really did a number on him and nearly wrecked his jaw, leaving him battered and bruised. Just when it looked like curtains for Anguirus, Mecha Godzilla hit him with a barrage and left because he thought that Anguirus was done for. Lucy Casperl and her crew find Anguirus hanging on by a thread and call in Kiryu for a rescue op on the monster islands. But plans change and Kiryu's rerouted to a Russian facility, with Anguirus in tow. En route, Kiryu's taken down by a gang of Mecha Godzillas and Anguirus makes a break for it, only to stumble into this arena where Godzilla is fighting Mecha King Ghidorah and more Mecha Godzillas.
Anguirus also jumps into the fray. Godzilla uses Anguirus as a living flail and slams him into Mecha King Ghidorah to deal some serious damage. Godzilla wraps up the fight and trashes the remaining Mecha Godzillas. It's safe to say that Mecha King Ghidorah learned his lesson. After wrecking the arena with his atomic breath, Godzilla and Anguirus make their exit. Titanosaurus. At a mega zoology conference in Honolulu, Dr. Kenji Ando spoke about Titanosaurus. Later, after getting whipped by Space Godzilla, Titanosaurus slipped back into the ocean. But things took a turn when the Devonian aliens got their hooks into him and turned him into their pawn. So, Titanosaurus, along with Gazora and Manda, got sent to rough up a fleet of aircraft carriers. Titanosaurus was tearing into one of the carriers when Godzilla, fresh from a tussle with Biollante, crashed the party. Godzilla nailed Titanosaurus with his atomic ray, forcing him and his aquatic buddies to beat a retreat. Later, the Devonian-controlled trio was tasked with defending the Devonian capital against Godzilla, who now had had Destoroya as backup. In the heat of the battle, Titanosaurus landed a solid punch on Godzilla's face. But Godzilla cannot be budged easily. He bit Titanosaurus's neck and tossed him into Destoroya. The military stepped in with their shiny new sonar guns and sent the aquatic monsters deeper underwater. But Godzilla grabbed Titanosaurus's ankle and followed them down to the Devonian capital. Down on the ocean floor, Godzilla was all business. He slammed Titanosaurus against the ground, used Manda as a makeshift weapon, and even stomped on Titanosaurus's neck, bulldozing them right into the Devonian base. Titanosaurus fought back, threw punches, and struggled. But Godzilla caught his hand and broke his arm. Ouch! That was Titanosaurus's cue to hightail it out of there. Batra. After Mecha King Ghidorah's defeat, the psychic twins Minette and Mallory were nabbed by the Russian military. They called in Batra for a dramatic rescue. Batra smashed through some planes and ripped the wings off the transport that was carrying the twins, which forced it to crash on a small island. There, he wiped out the soldiers to free the twins. The twins held a grudge against Mothra for their mom's death during a Mothra Kamakuras fight long ago. So the twins sent Batra to Infant Island to take out Mothra. Batra arrived and found Mothra still licking her wounds from battling Destoroya. Despite Mothra's best efforts and help from her larvae, Batra was just too much. He tossed Mothra into a cave and went to town with his prism beams, taking out the islanders. Batra finished her off with his prism beams, turning Infant Island into a fiery mess. After Mothra's death, the Shobijan and Mothra's larvae fled to the monster islands, but they knew Batra wouldn't stop. Sure enough, Batra showed up and started blasting. The island's patrol ships bought the larvae some time ago, but Batra trashed the fleet. Just as he was about to chase down the larvae, the trilopods invaded, capturing Batra and the island's kaiju. A trilopod who copied Batra's orders temporarily took him down, but the twins used their psychic powers to kill the trilopod and save Batra. Back in action, he followed the twins to Okinawa to finish off the Shobijin. There, he clashed with a CKR team trying to protect Lucy Casperl and her crew. The twins stepped in, letting Batra corner the team until King Caesar arrived and turned the tables. In the end, however, Batra managed to get out of the control of the twins and fled, leaving them to deal with King Caesar on their own. Space Godzilla. At his mega zoology conference in Honolulu, Dr. Kenji Ando shared a snapshot that had everyone buzzing. It was Space Godzilla looking rough after duking it out with Godzilla, but a lie. Last seen, this cosmic monster was exiting Earth's atmosphere. His crystals were still showing battle scars. A few years later, the cryog spot Space Godzilla hurtling towards their ship. Space Godzilla was launching crystal missiles their way. The cryog sent out a pair of Mecha Godzillas to handle him, but space's icy void froze them solid. Space Godzilla seized the moment and trashed both Mecha Godzillas using his tail and Corona Beam. He kept up his assault on the Cryog ship, busting up its defenses. The Cryogs then threw Gigan into the mix. Despite Space Godzilla's photon reactive shield blocking Gigan's first attack, Gigan snagged Space Godzilla's tail with his grappling hooks. But Space Godzilla used his telekinetic powers to trap Gigan 
in a crystal cage, which kept the cyborg out of his hair while he continued pounding the cryog ship. Gigan eventually broke free and went at Space Godzilla with his buzzsaw, managing to slash Space Godzilla's chest and damage a shoulder crystal. Space Godzilla hit back with his corona beam, which set Gaiden's sails on fire. After taking his flying form and surrounding himself with crystals, Space Godzilla inadvertently caught one of Gigan's arms and forced the cyborg to cut it off to escape. Space Godzilla then sets his sights back on Earth. Right before landing, he got blindsided by a swarm of trilopods. They sent him plummeting to Los Angeles. As a trilopod copied his traits, a Mega Gearus trilopod hybrid dragged Godzilla into the fray. The Space Godzilla trilopod, now with borrowed powers, began throwing Godzilla and Space Godzilla around with telekinesis, even creating its own crystals. Just when the trilopod was about to nail Space Godzilla with crystals, Godzilla intervened with his atomic breath. Space Godzilla then took the chance to take down his imposter. However, the Mega Gearus Trilopod Hybrid stunned Space Godzilla with a fireball, which allowed the Space Godzilla Trilopod to trap both Godzillas in a crystal prison. Realizing they needed to team up to get out of this mess, Space Godzilla and Godzilla blasted their way out. Space Godzilla then unleashed his rage on his doppelganger. Before the Space Godzilla Trilopod could fight back, Godzilla finished it off with his atomic breath, which Space Godzilla but left Godzilla exhausted. Gorosaurus. In primeval times, Gorosaurus was chowing down on a couple of big league dinosaurs, a Tyrannosaurus and a Spinosaurus, who were just about to duke it out over a Triceratops. But before Gorosaurus could savor his victory meal, Megagirus swoops in for an attack. Not one to be easily taken down, Gorosaurus pulls off a killer kangaroo kick, sending the dragonfly beast crashing out of the sky. In the Ice Age, our dino pal finds himself in a bit of a chilly situation, frozen solid in ice right next to Angirus. He even got a spot on the land monster mural in a cave on Infant Island, making him a bit of a prehistoric celeb. In the present, Gorosaurus got a rude awakening in Australia thanks to the Trilopod invasion. He wasn't about to roll over for these alien invaders, though. Gorosaurus threw down hard and took out a bunch of Trilopods. But even a tough guy like Gorosaurus has his limits. After a fierce battle, he got overwhelmed and one of the trilopods managed to snag some of his blood, copying his dinosaurian traits. Mechagodzilla. In issue number 11, Kiryu had the modified Type 3 design and a job in Paris to subdue Baragon. Baragon came in hot, breathing fire and putting up a solid fight. But Kiryu, with all its upgrades, managed to overpower and snag Baragon, then shipped him off to the new monster islands. In issue number 12, Kiryu teamed up with a naval fleet to take on the Devonian capital. But things got messy when Destoroya crashed the party and took on Kiryu's pilot. Jet Jaguar realized that he was outmatched, so he switched gears and shrunk down to pilot Kiryu himself. Using Kiryu's Absolute Zero Cannon, Jet Jaguar landed a one-hit wonder on Destoroya, icing him for good. Now, in issue number 13, Ryzon, the Cryog boss, had been cooking up an army of Mechagodzillas under the guise of a Russian warmonger, Diachenko. By issue number 14, the Mechagodzilla had Angiris on the ropes, nearly finishing him off. Then, as Godzilla showed up in Boston, Massachusetts, a U.S. Senator got Ryzon and his Mechagodzilla army on board to take down Godzilla. It was an all-out robot versus monster war in downtown Boston. Godzilla, though battered, managed to trash most of the Mecha Godzillas before Mecha King Ghidorah swooped in and whisked him away. Kiryu was then dispatched to Antarctica to pick up what he thought to be Anguirus' body. But surprise, surprise, Anguirus was still alive. Kiryu got the order to haul Anguirus to a secret facility in Russia. En route, they got ambushed by more Mecha Godzillas. Kiryu crashed in Russia and Anguirus bolted to help Godzilla battle Mecha King Ghidorah and the remaining Mecha Godzillas. Godzilla and Anguirus held their ground, making Mecha King Ghidorah retreat and leaving Ryzon to skedaddle in outer space with his two remaining Mecha Godzilla units. But the drama didn't end there. When Space Godzilla decided to attack the Cryog's ship, Ryzon sent out his last 
to Mechagodzillas. Space's harsh conditions froze them up, and Space Godzilla made quick work of them. At the story's end, we catch a glimpse of a single Mechagodzilla being repaired next to Gigan. Destoroya. Destoroya, the Devonian's terrifying bioweapon, made some serious waves pun intended, in Godzilla Rulers of Earth. It all started when a piece of juvenile Destoroya got left behind on Zilla in Honolulu, possibly because of a previous fight. The Devonians then unleashed a swarm of these juvenile Destoroyas in San Diego, causing chaos and distracting everyone while the cryog pinched a sample of Godzilla's skin. These little monsters tore through a comic convention, leaving a trail of destruction before spilling into the city. The CKR forces tried to take them down with regular firepower, but to no avail. These creatures were tough. Stephen Woods and his CKR team then brought out their secret weapon, the Icebox, but had a bit of trouble getting it going. Woods had to hold off a Destoroya until they finally froze it solid. After icing a few of them, the rest hightailed it back to the sea. But the party wasn't over. Godzilla showed up, only to get ambushed underwater by a bigger, badder Destoroya which left him with a nasty chest wound. On land, Godzilla faced a mob of juvenile Destoroyas, but he torched them with his nuclear pulse. That's when the big boss, perfect form Destoroya, emerged from the ocean for a showdown, exchanging beams with Godzilla before going in for a close combat. Destoroya got the upper hand until Mothra swooped in, taking the heat off Godzilla for a bit. Godzilla, now powered up from chowing down on a reactor, teamed up with Mothra to take on Destoroya. They got some good hits in, but Destoroya slashed Mothra badly with his horn katana. Godzilla snapped off Destoroya's horn and blasted him, and Mothra's larvae wrapped him up in a cocoon. Destoroya broke into smaller forms, trying to escape, but Godzilla barbecued most of them with his atomic breath, leaving only a few to flee. Later on, the Devonians brought Destoroya back, along with Manda, Gazora, and Titanosaurus, to guard their underwater capital against Godzilla. Manda Manda, under the Devonian's control, teamed up with Gazora for some serious mayhem. They attacked the USS Goldstein, and Manda went full anaconda mode, coiling up around the carrier and making it go boom, while Gazora took care of any unlucky survivors. Next up, the Devonians double-crossed the Cryogs and sent Manda, Gazora, and Titanosaurus to rough up a naval fleet. Things got heated when Godzilla stepped in. Manda tried to strangle Godzilla, but he grabbed Manda and swung him around like a battering ram, smacking him into a battleship and even Gazora. Manda and Gazora tried to tag team Godzilla, but got a face full of atomic breath for their trouble. Round 3. Manda and his aquatic buddies were called again to guard the Devonian capital against Godzilla, this time with Destoroya in the mix. Manda got all wrapped up in Godzilla, helping Destoroya land a nasty hit on Godzilla's chest. But Godzilla was on fire, literally. He swatted Manda into Destoroya and then hit Manda with his atomic breath. Post-battle, Manda's whereabouts were a big question mark. A trilopod sporting Manda's features showed up in the ultimate showdown in Los Angeles, hinting that Manda had a run-in with the trilopods. But as for Manda himself, he was MIA in the trilopod hive, and didn't show up for the final clash. So, where Manda ended up after all the chaos is anyone's guess. Gazora. Under the control of the Devonian aliens, Gazora teamed up with Manda for a major smackdown on the USS Goldstein. After Manda did the heavy lifting, crushing the carrier, Gazora swooped in to handle the survivors. Fast forward a bit, and the Devonians had another job for Gazora, Manda, and their new buddy Titanosaurus. But I've already spoken about the events in previous subheads, so I suppose there's no point in going through them again. Baron. Way back, Varen and Ibira popped up during King Caesar's fight with Megalon, but after that, Varen hit the snooze button for a long while. In the present, Varen was making a grand entrance out of a lake in China where Lucy Casperl and her crew were on a monster hunt. Varen wasn't there to play nice. He went straight into action mode, tearing up the military's hardware like it was made of paper. But when Lucy's group tried to make a getaway, Varen was on their trail, until Rodan swooped in. Varen, never one to back down from a challenge, switched gears and took on Rodan. Their battle got intense outside a hidden military base in the mountains. 
Varen managed to ground Rodan for a sec, but Rodan wasn't down for long and smacked Varen right into the mountain. The military tried to break up the monster brawl, but Varen and Rodan wanted to continue. And who could possibly stop two kaiju from doing what they wanted to do? So they resumed their clash and wrecked the base in the process. Varen played dirty, using his back spikes to shred Rodan's wings, forcing him to bail. Just as Varen was about to continue his rampage on the base, Gyro burst onto the scene, whacking Varen with a satellite dish and throwing punches. Gyra's brute strength was too much for Varen, who decided to beat a retreat. But Gyra wasn't done. He latched onto Varen's tail as Varen took off over the ocean. What happened next? Well, that's anyone's guess, because Varen didn't show his face again for years. Hedora. Hedora, the infamous smog monster, was this pollution-loving creature that even survived Godzilla. The last time anyone saw Hedora, it was just cruising past some oil rigs, minding its own business. Despite its rep for wreaking havoc, Hedora didn't stir up any more trouble for humans. It kind of just disappeared off the radar, not making a peep or a splash since that last sighting. Gyra and Sanda. A few years back, this big green guy was causing chaos, but the Chinese military nabbed him and turned him into their little science project. Lucy Casperl stumbled upon Gyra, all cooped up in a tank. When Varen and Rodan decided to fight near the facility where Gyra was held, Lucy saw her chance. Amidst the chaos, she freed Gyra, hoping he'd jump into the fray. And that's exactly what Gyra did. After Rodan took off, Gyra stepped up to battle Varen. It was long before Gyra's brute strength got the upper hand, forcing Varen to make a break for it. But Gyra wasn't done. He latched onto Varen's tail, hitching a ride over the ocean. During this wild flight, Gyra spotted his brother, Sanda, reaching out from a mountain. Eventually, Gyra splashed down into the ocean. Sanda tried for days to reach him, but when they finally met, Gyra wasn't in a hugging mood. He whacked Sanda with a ship, which caught Godzilla's attention, and the chase was on. The brothers ended up in Australia, with the military hot on their heels. But Gyra, showing a softer side, shielded Sanda from Godzilla's atomic breath. When Godzilla surfaced, the brothers bolted into the city. Things heated up when a tank fired at them, and Gyra smashed it, shocking Sanda and sparking a brotherly brawl, until Godzilla showed up. Dodging Godzilla's atomic ray, the Gargantua brothers teamed up against the bigger threat. Sanda punched away while Gyra chomped on Godzilla's arm, clawing at his face. They managed to knock Godzilla down, but he wasn't out. Godzilla tossed Sanda and tried to squish Gyra. In the midst of the battle, Sanda blindsided Godzilla with a petrol tanker, forcing Godzilla to beat a retreat. Gyra was pretty banged up, but Sanda stuck by him. The military swooped in and knocked them out with some gas, then shipped them off to the new monster islands for a much-needed break. Magira. Magira's story starts in Las Vegas. The upgraded Gigan, the Millennium UFO, and Godzilla were stirring up chaos when Magira entered the scene. The new mecha on the block, Magira jumps into the fray against Gigan. But Gigan was quick and blasted the missiles that Magira had launched before they hit their mark. Undeterred, Magira goes on the offensive and blocks Gigan, hitting back with plasma laser cannons and drills, which pushes Gigan on the defensive. But Gigan tries a sneak attack on Magira. Bad move. Magira dodges slickly, and Gigan, in a classic whoops moment, wrecks the UFO himself. The wreckage birthed Orga, and Magira was faced with a new challenge. Turns out Orga's a tougher cookie. He grabs Magira and literally tears it in half. But Magira's not done yet, splitting into Star Falcon and Land Magira, the mech keeps up the fight. Star Falcon takes on Gigan, while Land Magira keeps Orga busy. A few years later, Magira was back in action, this time teaming up with Kiryu to tackle the Trilopod invasion in LA. Magira and Kiryu jump into the fray, giving Godzilla a much needed assist. Magira gets down and dirty, ramming into the frozen Baragon Trilopod, but then faces a beatdown from the Kumanga Trilopod and Titanosaurus Trilopod. Battered but not beaten, Magira hangs in there, joining the monster mash against Majida, the colossal trilopod queen. And when Godzilla finally takes down Majida, Magira's right there in the thick of it, proving its mettle in the monster world. 19. 
Orga. The Cryog aliens sent an upgraded Gigan to snatch the Millennium UFO from Area 51. Gigan, UFO in tow, then hit up Las Vegas for a showdown, where they squared off against Godzilla and Magira. But before they could finish their DNA cocktail, the UFO got destroyed and out popped Orga from the wreckage. He and Gigan started dominating Godzilla and Magira. Orga, with his insane healing skills, shrugged off every hit like it was nothing. His brute strength was so intense that he ripped Magira right in half. The Cryog thought they had this in the bag until Orga lost it and tried to chow down on his cyborg buddy Gigan, throwing everyone for a loop. Gigan eventually wriggled free, and the pieces of Magira, Star Falcon, and Land Magira tried to take down Orga. They didn't have much luck. Then Jet Jaguar entered the scene, catching Orga's eye. In a wild move, Jet Jaguar flew straight into Orga's mouth. Orga couldn't do a thing as Jet Jaguar went mega inside him, causing a big, messy Orga explosion. After the dust settled, the Cryog spotted Orga's bits starting to regenerate. They were all about scooping him up for round two. But then Jet Jaguar, trying to stomp out Orga's regeneration, got subdued by a cryog ship. The cryogs collected Orga's biomass and shot it into space in a smaller ship. But just as Biolante destroyed the main cryog ship, the cryog launched Orga's remains into the void. After that, Orga went MIA. Jet Jaguar. First up, he drops into Las Vegas, human-sized but ready to rumble. I have already mentioned how the Jet Jaguar dives into Orga's mouth and goes mega-sized, making Orga go boom. Godzilla, a bit puzzled, tries to fry Jet Jaguar with his atomic breath, but they end up tag-teaming against Gigan. After Godzilla handles Gigan, he gets ticked at Jet Jaguar and blasts him, but Jet Jaguar holds his own with a knockout punch, then hauls Godzilla back to the sea. Turns out Jet Jaguar's been a bit of a mystery machine. Dr. Yumi Nagata, head of the Top Secret Jet Jaguar project, reveals that her granddad knew all about Jet Jaguar's secrets and mission, but he was taken out when Godzilla first showed up. Jet Jaguar had been dormant until the cryog assault on Area 51. Then he just up and split. Dr. Nagata reckons the cryog's arrival might have flipped Jet Jaguar's on switch. Jet Jaguar then swoops in to save Steven Woods and Chavez from the cryogs. After a bit of cryog crushing action, he flies them to safe but once the cryogs are toast and their escape pod is space-bound, Jet Jaguar powers down, all out of juice. Next, he's back in the game to fight Destoroya, who's causing a ruckus on the USS Simon. Jet Jaguar, realizing he's outgunned, shrinks down to pilot Kiryu and uses the mech's absolute zero cannon to freeze and finish off Destoroya. He tries to stop some underwater explosives, but doesn't make it, leading to Godzilla getting buried and Jet Jaguar going dormant again under the ocean. King Caesar. Back in the day, King Caesar was the guardian monster for humanity. Things got messy when Megalon surfaced to wreak havoc, and King Caesar stepped up to the plate. Their clash, though, led to a lot of human casualties, which totally ticked off King Caesar. To add to the chaos, other monsters like Varen and Ibira showed up, escalating the destruction. The monster rumble was cut short when a Devonian warship crashed, which sent King Caesar and Megalon underground out of sight for generations. King Caesar was called a land monster on a mural on Infant Island, and appeared in a vision seen by Lucy Casperl, where he was fighting Cryog invaders alongside Godzilla and Mothra's larvae. During the Trilopod invasion, the Shobijin revealed King Caesar was in Okinawa, just waiting to be woken up to save the day. Lucy and her team, along with the Shobijin, found him snoozing inside a mountain. But then Batra crashed the party, leading to King Caesar waking up and throwing down. Batra bailed when the trilopods arrived, leaving King Caesar to deal with them. He did a number on the trilopods, but let himself get captured, ending up in their hive in LA. Before getting nabbed, though, he took out Minette and Mallory for trying to take down Lucy and her crew. Inside the hive, King Caesar turned into a real hero, freeing all the captured monsters. He then led the monster squad into battle with Godzilla against the trilopods, taking out the Kamakaris and Rodan trilopod hybrids. King Caesar even tried to tackle Megida.
Megalon. So this guy bursts out of the earth, ready to raise hell, and starts laying waste to a village with his fiery napalm bombs. The villagers are freaking out, and who can blame them? Megalon's like a walking disaster. That's when King Caesar comes into the picture, the village's guardian monster. He doesn't waste any time. He comes in hot with a flying kick straight to Megalon's face. What follows is an all-out monster brawl. These two behemoths are going at it. But their fight is so intense that it ends up causing way more harm than good. Buildings are crumbling. Fires are spreading. It's total chaos. This ruckus doesn't go unnoticed. Other monsters start popping up, thinking they need to sort out this mess and restore some kind of cosmic balance. But just when things couldn't get any crazier, a Devonian warship crashes into the ocean. This crash is so massive that it sends Megalon and King Caesar tumbling into the Earth's crust. After that wild duel, Megalon just vanishes. No more appearances, no more village-destroying rampages. Abira. Way back in ancient times, during the fight between King Caesar and Megalon, Abira was one of the kaiju who surfaced. He and Varen showed up, targeting the humans trying to escape the madness at sea. After the dust settled from the monster mash, Abira hit the snooze button along with the others, going dormant once again. In modern times, Abira's back in action. Just as Godzilla was recovering underwater from a tussle with the Cryog's Mecha Godzillas and Mecha King Ghidorah, Ibira decided it was a good time for a surprise attack. He went straight for Godzilla, slashing his face and taking the fight to the surface. Abira got a claw around Godzilla's throat, but Godzilla wasn't happy about it. He shook off Abira with his atomic breath and chomped on one of his claws. Their battle drifted to the shores of Sao Paulo, Brazil, where Godzilla tossed Abira onto land. Abira tried to come back with a throat grab, but then a bunch of Mega Nulon hatchings swarmed Abira. They broke through his shell, drawing blood. Abira managed to snap some of them in half, but Godzilla kept the pressure on with another atomic blast. While Godzilla and Ibira were still going at it, Megagirus showed up and stung Ibira, adding to his misery. After taking a beating from Godzilla, Megagirus, and Meganulon, Ibira had enough. He saw his chance and ran back to the ocean. Kamebus. Back in prehistoric time, Kamebus wasn't the kind to chill on the sidelines. He crashed the party while Gorosaurus and Megagirus were duking it out, bringing his own brand of chaos to the mix. In modern times, Kamebus found himself in a bit of a pickle. The trilopods, those alien troublemakers, had snagged him and thrown him into their hive. King Caesar recognized Kamebus from the old days. King Caesar busted Kamebus out, and then they went on to free all all the other captured kaiju. Once free, Kamebus jumped right into the fray against the trilopods and their big boss, Megida. It was an all-out monster mash, and Kamebus was right in the thick of it. After the dust settled and Godzilla took down Megida, Kamebus followed Godzilla and the rest of the kaiju crew as they headed out to sea. Ganymus, Lucy Casperl's trip to Infant Island turned out to be quite an eye-opener. She stumbled upon this epic cave painting that was basically a who's who of Earth's kaiju. It was like the ancient monster version of Harry Potter's sorting hat, categorizing them based on elements water, earth, fire, or air. In the water category, Ganymus was present with some notable names like Zilla, Varen, Titanosaurus, Gazora, Manda, Abira, and Camebus. Camacarus. Many years ago, Minette and Mallory were up to some kid stuff, playing hide and seek with their mom in a forest. But things took a wild turn when Camacarus, this massive mantis-like monster, crashed their party. Just as things were getting tense, Mothra swooped in to take on Camacarus. Their clash, though, got out of control, and tragically, the twins' mom got caught in the crossfire. Camacarus, not sticking around for the aftermath, booked it out of there with Mothra hot on its heels. In the present time, Camacarus finds itself in a bit of a bind, nabbed by the trilopods and cooped up in their massive hide. But then King comes to the rescue. He breaks out Kamakuras along with a bunch of other captured kaiju. It's a full-on monster jailbreak in Los Angeles, and they all team up with Godzilla, who's seriously outnumbered in his brawl against the trilopods. 
Mega Nulon. Lucy Casperl and her crew arrived in Brazil to check out these mysterious eggs discovered in a rainforest. Talk about timing. Right when they got there, the eggs hatched into Mega Nulon, and these creatures were not in a good mood. They started attacking anyone in sight, really stirring up trouble. As the Mega Nulon swarmed into Sao Paulo, things got even wilder. Godzilla and Ibira popped up out of nowhere, bringing their sea brawl onto land. The Mega Nulon, seizing the opportunity, latched on to Abira, busting through his shell. Just when you thought it couldn't get more chaotic, Mega Gearus swoops into the fray. Abira beats a retreat, but Mega Gearus snatches Godzilla up and takes him to her nest, which is crawling with hundreds of Mega Nulon and Mega Nula. These bugs swarm Godzilla biting into him and drawing blood. But Godzilla lets loose a nuclear pulse, torching the kaiju insects and leveling the nest, which was some good old monster version of pest control Godzilla style. Megagirus. Megagirus, fresh out of her Brazilian jungle nest, swooped into Sao Paulo, right into the middle of a monster brawl between Godzilla, Abira, and a bunch of Mega Nulon. Then Megagirus set her sights on Godzilla, dodging Godzilla's atomic breath. With her crazy fast flying, Megagirus tried a sneak attack, but Godzilla hit her with a nuclear pulse. Undeterred, Megagirus got her stinger into Godzilla's leg, sapping his energy and hitting him with a massive atomic fireball. With Godzilla down for the count, she hoisted him up and flew him to her nest, packed with Mega Nulon and Mega Nula. Godzilla blasted the whole nest with another nuclear pulse. This really ticked off Megagirus who lifted Godzilla above the ruins. But Godzilla clamped onto her neck, and they both crashed down in Machu Picchu, Peru. Just as they were gearing up for round two, the cryogs sent a pod to Earth, unleashing some trilopods. These new players jumped into the fight, pinning down both monsters and even copying Megagirus's DNA to create a Megagirus trilopod hybrid. Megagirus tried to make a break for it, but Godzilla chucked a trilopod at her, knocking her back to the ground. Godzilla got carted off to Los Angeles, while Megagirus just disappeared. Baragon and Kiryu Baragon appeared in Paris's Arc de Triomphe. Kiryu, the mech warrior, gets called in to handle the situation. Baragon, though, wasn't going down without proving his mettle, so he's spewing flames and chomping on Kiryu like there's no tomorrow. Kiryu takes to the sky and starts raining missiles down on Baragon, throwing him off his game. Then Kiryu gets up close and personal, grabs Baragon by his nasal horn, and lands a knockout punch. With Baragon out out cold, Kiryu scoops him up with some cables and flies him off to the Monster Islands, a new chill zone for monsters like Sanda and Gaira. A few months later, Baragon was getting into scraps with Kamunga and Sanda while Rodan was doing flybys. You know, just regular kaiju stuff. But then the trilopods invade and one of them snags Baragon's DNA. Next thing you know, Baragon's nabbed and thrown into the trilopod hive with all the other Earth kaiju. But then King Caesar, the ancient monster hero, busts in and frees Baragon and the rest of the captive kaiju. Baragon even takes down the Kumanga trilopod with his heat ray. Mecha King Ghidorah After King Ghidorah got KO'd, the Cryog crew found his body and got to work. They brought in Gigan to do some dirty work, chopping off Ghidorah's middle head and decking him out with some serious mech upgrades. The result was Mecha King Ghidorah, a dragon with a tech twist, under the Cryog's control. Godzilla, fresh from surviving a Mecha Godzilla onslaught, suddenly found himself face to face with Mecha King Ghidorah. The Mech Dragon, steered by psychic twins Minette and Mallory, snagged Godzilla with these fancy capture devices and a machine hand. The plan was to haul Godzilla off to a robotics factory in Russia, which Ryzen had turned into his personal monster battle arena. On the way there, Godzilla tries to bust out, but Mecha King Ghidorah's shock treatment kept him in check. When they hit the arena, Ghidorah dropped Godzilla in the middle of it, and before Big G could get his bearings, Ghidorah landed on him and kicked him towards a couple of Mecha Godzilla units lying in wait. 
As the fight heated up, the twins started doubting their control over Mecha King Ghidorah. Meanwhile, Ghidorah was dishing out gravity and laser beams point blank on Godzilla. Godzilla managed to shove a Mecha Godzilla into Ghidorah and take the fight to the ground. But juggling three heavy hitters was no walk in the park. Just as Godzilla was getting pummeling, Anguirus, having escaped from Kiryu's grip, jumped into the fray. He took out one Mecha Godzilla, which gave Godzilla a fighting chance. Mecha King Ghidorah tried to take off, but Godzilla used the remaining Mecha Godzilla to ground the cyborg dragon. After a bit more battle, Back and forth, Godzilla got creative and used Anguirus as a projectile against Ghidorah. Then he tricked Ghidorah into grabbing the last Mecha Godzilla. With all the Mecha Godzillas out of the picture, Mecha King Ghidorah decided to bail and shot off into space. Ryzon was keen on getting him back. But Mecha King Ghidorah had other ideas. He left the solar system, with the Cryogs guessing he might be out looking for more of his kind. Marvelous Videos is going all guns blazing into the MonsterVerse, exploring everything there is to explore from the past to the present and the future. You'll find Deep Dive and other videos on the latest MonsterVerse TV series, the upcoming movie, and much more. So if you're a Gajira or Kong fan, I suggest you stick around with us. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.